Behind me is the brand new iMac, the 2017 model with the 27 inch display. This is the base model and in this video I want to show you how this base model performs when editing 4K video. Let's get started. So this is the base model that I'm using. It's a 3.4 gigahertz Core i5 processor. Um, it is the base model, but I have made two upgrades to it. The first upgrade relates to the size of the disk. So you can see here that if I go to storage, I have a two terabyte fusion drive instead of the default one terabyte drive. So I have a little bit more space. The other upgrade was to the memory. By default, this Mac comes with eight gigabytes, which is what I purchased from Apple. And then aftermarket, I purchased two more memory modules, each 16 gigabytes each. Really easy to insert these. You simply turn the iMac upside down and there's just a little area there that you can access the memory and push in those two additional memory cards. That cost me about 250 bucks to upgrade that and it's well worth it because now I have 40 gigabytes. Okay, so let's take a look at some video editing. I'm using a tool here called Final Cut Pro. And in here I have imported some footage, all of it shot from a drone. And you'll see if we look in the information over here that this is 4K video footage shot at 30 frames per second. So some pretty decent sized video files to deal with here. And you'll see that I am able to skim through these clips without any kind of stutters or problems or delays. Uh, I can very smoothly skim through this footage to look at what I want. When I find something I'm interested in, I can play it back. Again, it plays straight off, no problems whatsoever. This is not the behavior I've been seeing with my older MacBook Pro, which really struggles to skim and play back. But on this iMac, absolutely no problems at all. Now down here in my timeline, I've started to do a bit of video editing with some music. Um, I'm just gonna show you a couple of things we can do in the timeline and how well uh, or poorly this responds. First of all, we're gonna add a clip in here. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go up here, we will add this clip in and delete the space here and you can see now that that new clip when I start to play it plays back instantly no problems no stuttering no waiting for anything you'll also notice that the other clips here look a lot better than this clip I've added that's because we haven't color graded it so to color grade it I'm gonna go over to my workspace for colors and effects and I'm gonna take a look at the color board and I'm gonna do some color grading now color grading, that's a whole separate thing, um, but what I just want to show you here is how quickly Final Cut Pro can handle that. Um, I'm going to do some color grading based primarily on this RGB overlay, and all I'm gonna do is adjust the exposure a little bit to raise the exposure. I'm gonna lower the midtones, and I'm going to lower the shadows to really give me a nice contrast there. And then I'm gonna go into saturation and I'm gonna bump up the saturation just a little bit too. And you'll see that was all done on the fly, um, no waiting for anything to happen. You can see here now this clip fits in with the others and again, plays back instantly, no problems whatsoever. The other thing to show you is transitions. These can be quite expensive things to use. Um, I'm gonna use a Luma transition, which I'm just gonna put here between these two clips. And you'll see that that Luma transition goes in. And again, no waiting to do anything. It just goes in and I'm able to play it back pretty smoothly. Let's put in a few more transitions as well, just to really show this thing off. We'll put one in here. You can see when I play this, we get this kind of nice fade effect. Um, and then right at the end, we are going to fade out at the end with a cross dissolve. So that will fade nicely to black. Okay, and again, you'll see no problems whatsoever there with inserting all of this stuff. Now, if you're familiar with Final Cut Pro, you might recognize these little dots here that mean we need to actually do a render to really get these transitions to work. So to do that, we are just going to say render all, and you'll see up here, the Final Cut Pro is now rendering that stuff. It works really quickly. There's not a lot of hanging around waiting for this to do its thing. Okay, so that's the video done. It's about 30 seconds long. Now we'll export it as a 4K file. So we'll carry on a beach sound. Yeah, that sounds good. We'll replace what we already had. And at this point, it starts to render the video out again. 
Now this is creating a pretty big file, but it really doesn't take very long. Okay, so that's completed now. It took just a couple of minutes and you'll see that we have here a pretty large file, nearly 200 megabytes, that it was able to render pretty quickly of 4K footage. So if you're looking to do 4K video editing and you're looking at getting an iMac to do it, I would say that this base model here is perfectly capable of doing that. You just might want to upgrade the RAM. For more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. See you next time.